today we will consider a generalization of NA phase. Recall NA phase themselves were a generalization of DA phase and now we are considering a generalization of NA phase and that generalization is that such automata NA phase with epsilon transitions will allow transitions not only on symbols as well as on the empty string epsilon. Now, here is a this this is an example of such an automaton. Let us first informally understand how this epsilon transitions work. First notice that all there are three states in this machine m and all these three states are final states. And yet, as we will see, it is not the case that this automaton accepts all strings. Now, you see for example, the automaton is in this state and at from this state, it can take an epsilon transition to this state. What does it mean? That imagine this let me name these states as p, q and r. At some point of time the machine m is in state p and let us say a 2 came now. The next symbol is the symbol 2. Recall as you can see in this transition diagram that the alphabet that the machine uses is 0, 1 and 2. Now, in the, this is the state sequence and in this state sequence for at some point of time the machine is in state p and the symbol 2 comes. Now, what the machine can do? It has the choice of not using this symbol immediately what is on the input, but it can take a transition like this epsilon and then it would be in q, but then again from this q it can again take another epsilon to go to the state r. In other words, we are thinking of this 2 as if there were 2 epsilons and followed by 2, but of course, 2 epsilons followed by 2 is of course, the string 2 itself. And therefore, when such transitions are allowed, you see what the machine can do, it is in state p, it takes this epsilon transition to go to q, from q takes the epsilon transition to go to r and now it consumes the symbol 2 and therefore, it can be in the state r just on the symbol 2, because it has the ability to make transitions on epsilon. First of all, we should understand that suppose I have an input string a 1, a 2, a n and I have a machine some machine which does allow epsilon transitions. And what do I think about these epsilon? Where these where do these epsilons lie? One way of thinking of this string is that the, it is of course, same as infinitely many other strings which are obtained by padding 0 or more epsilons either in front of the entire string or between two symbols or at the end of the string. So, for example, this as you can see because epsilon is the empty string this is surely same as epsilon epsilon a 1, epsilon 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 a 2, so on a n and maybe 4 epsilons. When I say that the machine some machine with epsilon transition has on the input such a string, and then I would like to figure out which all states the machine can go to. 
on scanning this string, I need to take care of all such strings, not just the string a 1, a 2, a n, but as I said padding 0 or more epsilons in between two symbols in front of the string as well as at the end of the string. So, it appears that now we have a hard task to figure out even which all states the machine can be given an input string, because there are any number of epsilons that can be there all over the string. As we will see that this problem can be taken care of quite nicely and simply, but before that maybe we should understand this particular example a little bit. So, if we see this machine, we can of course, see that the string 0 0 1 1 1 2 will be accepted by this machine. Why? Because on the first 0 of course, the machine remains here in state p, second 0 machine remains here and now it takes an epsilon transition, it considers there as if there is an epsilon here between this 0 and the 1 comes to state q and then remains in state q for the next 3 symbols which are all 1s which it can and now it takes an epsilon transition to go to r and there is this 2 and so it comes back to 2. Therefore, what I am seeing is that it is possible for the machine to go from its initial state to one of its final states right? using the transition including of course, epsilon transition. So, therefore, this string is in the language of the machine m. Remember that for an NFA, what we said was a string is accepted by the NFA, if such a string can take the machine from its initial state to one of the final states, which this can do. On the, con on the other hand, if it had not seen or used the epsilons the way I just told you, it might have been in some other state. In fact, it will be in some other state, which is all right, but having considered that an epsilon here on which the machine makes transition, another epsilon here the machine makes a transition on these two epsilons, the machine can go from its initial state to one of its final states right at the end of the string. On the other hand, can this machine accept the string let us say 2 1 1. And I claim that this string is not accepted by this machine, because what happens? The first symbol itself is 2. Right? To consume this symbol, the only way the machine can do so is to go all the way up to this state, which of course, it can do right in the beginning it takes two epsilon transitions, it considers that there are two epsilons in front. So, then it right in the beginning taking those two epsilon transitions it comes to this state r and now it consumes this symbol 2. After that what can it do? Now, a 1 is there, there are no epsilon transitions possible from here. So, no transition will be defined, even if the machine consumes the first symbol 2. And we should be able to convince ourselves that there is no way, how many epsilons you may put either in front or in between two symbols or at the end, this particular string will not be accepted by the machine end. In, let me describe the language accepted by this machine and later on we will we'll definitely see the justification for that. 
L n is the language in which I claim the strings are of the form 0 i 1 j 2 k, where the constraints on i j k is really nothing except that each one can be 0. And all that we have to ensure for a string to be in this language, the way we have defined it, that you may have 0 or more number of zeros, but all of them, they must be in the beginning followed by 0 or more number of 1s followed by 0 or more number of 2s. In fact, you see for example, let us just take 0 1 1. Indeed, first 0 it is here, then takes an epsilon transition remains here for the next 2 talking of the string 0 1 1 and it is easy to see the machine can go from this state, the initial state to q on 0 1 1 and q is a final state. Therefore, this will be in the language. And so on, in this manner can at least intuitively convince ourselves that, that this is the language accepted by the machine M, which has epsilon transitions. Now, our question will be, can NFAs with epsilon transitions accept some language, which is not regular? The question is relevant obviously, because when we started with DFA, our definition was regular languages are precisely those languages, which can be accepted by DFAs. Then we generalize the notion of DFA to NFAs, non-deterministic finite automata and that generalization was in this form that we said from a state on a symbol, in case of an NFA there can be 0, 1 or more transitions unlike in case of DFA, where there is precisely exactly one transition possible. And yet with this generalization, one result that we had seen that a language L is accepted by an NFA, if and only if L is accepted by a DFA. And we prove this result by taking an NFA and finding an equivalent DFA by, you know, that DFA had set of all subsets state space of the machine accepted, I mean the NFA machine and we showed that that particular DFA will accept the same language. So, this result tells me that NFAs also will precisely capture, will precisely accept the same class of languages, which is the class of regular languages. And now, we have yet another generalization, we have added epsilon transitions to DFA, NFAs. So, the question is that, is it true that a language L is accepted by an NFA? Now, if I put this with epsilon transitions, if and only if L is accepted by DFA, is it true? Because if it is, in that case of course, that even giving this extra power of epsilon transitions, we do not go beyond the class of regular languages. On the other hand, if it is the case 
that using epsilon transitions we can do more than what a DFA or an NFA can do, then we have something interesting. And in fact, we will show that the answer is Yes, the above is true. And let us prove this fact that an NFA with epsilon transitions, and we will prove it in the same manner that is, given an NFA with epsilon transitions, we will construct a DFA which will accept the same language. And therefore, if that construction, if we manage to show, then of course, the answer is yes, that even NFAs with epsilon transitions will accept languages, which are, which can be accepted by DFA. In order to consider this question, we need to take care of this problem that I mentioned before that now, since there are epsilon transitions available to the machine, the input is cannot be consumed symbol by symbol. We need to take care of the possibility of epsilon transitions between two symbols, maybe at the end of the string as well as in before the string. Now, it might appear since there are many, many, in fact, infinitely many strings which are possible in this manner by plugging in 0 or more epsilons all over, that the problem is going to be something which is horrendously difficult. But as it happens, there is a very simple notion which will let me handle all these infinite strings from one simple input string to all possible strings with lots of epsilons all over in between symbols etcetera. And that simple idea which will let me take care of all these all this this the all these situations is the notion of epsilon closure. Now, this let me first define epsilon closure for any state, let us say B i. Informally, it is the set of all states P j. So, to you understand P i is a element of the set of states of the machine and epsilon closure of a state is the set of all q j such that q j is reachable from p i using 0 or more epsilon transition. We can understand this definition more clearly if we just look at this example above. So, what is the epsilon closure of this state P? Now, remember epsilon closure is going to give me a subset of states, each of which can be reached from the state using only epsilon transitions, 0 or more, the things which are all the states which are reachable. So, it is not difficult to see that epsilon closure of this state P is P, Q and R. Why? Because of course, P you can reach from P using 0 epsilons, you are just there. Q you can go using just 1 epsilon 
and r also you can go from p using 2 epsilon. So, let me let me do the rest other two states what is the epsilon closure of q it is not difficult to see it is q the set consisting of q and r and epsilon closure of r is precisely that state itself. Right. And given a transition diagram, you can compute epsilon closure of any state by simple reachability algorithm, many of which we know. All right. Now, how do we handle what is the set of states the machine can go to on an input string using any number of epsilon transitions. So, what I am trying to say is that suppose m is an NFA with epsilon transitions q sigma delta q 0 f. It is like it is this definition is like NFA, where is the distinction between plain NFAs which do not have epsilon transition. It is here that delta is now a mapping from q cross sigma union epsilon to power set of q, right. Why? Because there are epsilon transitions. So, you are in a state, of course, you can consume an input symbol as well as you can use an epsilon to go to some other state of number of states. Now, if we manage to define delta hat properly. What do you want delta hat to be? Delta hat should be as before that it should it should be a map from q cross sigma star to power set of q and the idea would be the mapping we should be we should define it this manner such that delta hat of let us say p and x is the set of all states m can be in starting from p on input x. Now, I am not putting epsilon ex explicitly in this, because the string x as I know is same as a string, you know, suppose x is just, suppose x is a 1, a 2, a 3, but this is also same as epsilon, epsilon a 1, a 2, epsilon a 3, epsilon, epsilon, right. So, delta hat must take care of all these epsilon transitions, because by string x, when I give x, the machine can either take it as just plain simple sequence of symbols or of course, it can take it in this manner that between symbols before or after the string, there are epsilons as many as it wishes to have. So, all such strings which are actually same as the string x. In fact, what I am trying to say is even when you pad in all pad pad into this string all these epsilons, 
the string actually is same because epsilon is the empty string. So, my delta hat should be able to handle all this and how do I handle that. Okay. So, before formally defining delta hat, let me work out this example and the situation will be quite clear. So, let us see what is delta hat of epsilon for this case. From the start state p, delta hat p epsilon. So, this is of course, the empty string epsilon and now I am asking which all states the machine can be, this particular machine can be in the beginning without consuming any symbols from the input. Now, as we can see it can be of course, it can be in p as well as it can be in q, because it just uses 1 epsilon as well as it can be in r. So, now do you see that if delta hat of p epsilon is the epsilon closure of the start state of this machine p. Uh, m and this is just simply this, which is of course, as we have seen here is p q r. And now, let us see the machine is in a after after scanning some string, some portion of uh, an input string the machine is in some of these you know some of these states right now this notion of epsilon closure of course can be extended to a subset of states rather than a single state where p is the subset of q the set of all states of the machine and this is simply the union of epsilon closure of you know some q i where q i is in this set that is easy to see or rather this is this is really a definition, but it makes sense that is which all I can ask the same thing that the meaning of when I have a set of states rather than a single state what I am trying to find out through this definition is the set of all states the machine can be or the set of all states reachable using only epsilon transitions from any one of the states in this set of states p. Okay. So, this is clear and now let us say I just have this string 0, 1 and I want to know which all states this particular machine can be on this string 0 and 1. Now, let us assume inductively that I know delta hat of p, which is the initial state of this machine and for this let us say 0 1 that is I know which all states the machine can be starting from p on consuming one symbol and of course, now any number of epsilon. So, you see this string can be thought in terms of there are any number of epsilon here, any number of epsilon here and any number of epsilon here. So, suppose 
using after 0, if you use some epsilon transitions and you are in some state, let us say p i starting from p, do you see that by definition p i will be a member of this set of states, right. Whether you use 0 epsilon or 1 epsilon or any number of epsilon, all those things must be taken care of by my definition of delta hat, if it is done correctly. So, in that case, if I know that p delta hat p 0 is some r, which is the subset of q. Now, what is going to be delta hat of p 0 1? So, you see what I need to take care of is that this 0 with some epsilons before, some epsilons after all the states that one could reach that is already there in this capital R. So, do you see that, so I take any state let us say R from capital R and then take delta of R and now this 1 has come 1 and I will get a number of states, let us say R dash. But now I need to look at the effect of having epsilons. So, then all I need to do is to take epsilon closure of what r dash. Is this clear? So, so let me define r dash more clearly. What is r dash there for? r dash is this is the union of all r in capital R. So, once more, so delta hat of p of 0 with any number of epsilons etcetera can take me to one of these states R. Now, a 1 comes just using that 1 from that this set of states we can go to any one of these states. The machine can go to any one of these states R dash. But now, after that, after that one, of course, there can be any number of epsilons which the machine can use. So, we take the epsilon closure. You see, epsilon closure has the is the built in device of taking care of 0 or more number of epsilon transitions. If you think it will become clear, because you are just saying which all states one can reach using 0 or more number of epsilon all right. So, this definition from that example we can complete inductively the definition of delta hat, because we have already given the base condition and then the induction will follow using this idea. But let me instead of writing all that let me do it for this particular example what the corresponding DFA will be, if I take care of uh, epsilon transitions. In other words, what we are saying is from an NFA using some idea we found that found from an NFA we can go to a DFA, which will accept the same language and I will show you that I can do the same for this NFA also, which has epsilon transitions. So, I am attempting to get an equivalent DFA, equivalent in the sense 
which will accept the same language as this in a free epsilon transition using the idea that we had used to construct equivalent DFA from NFA. So, let us see initially which all states if remember the DFA in general will have as states the subsets of the state space of M. Of course, M's set of states is P, Q and R. So, let me ask initially which of this subset of states the machine can be without it has not seen any input, but then it could have seen the it could have used the epsilon. Initially of course, the machine is in the state P, but without consuming any input symbol just using epsilon it can also be in Q, it can also be in R. So, my DFA clearly will have a state corresponding to P, Q and R. All right, this is the initial state of the DFA if I manage to build a DFA. And now, let me think of the transitions from this state on the symbols and this there are only three symbols 0, 1 and 2. So, on 0 which are the states this the that NFA can be. Suppose, it is in any one of these states. NFA is in any one of these states P, Q or R, which all states it can be when it sees a 0. So, the M is in any one of these states P, Q or R and now a 0 came, right. P on 0 of course, it moves to P, but then on this same 0, it has just used 1 0, but it can now use some epsilon and therefore, I need to take the epsilon closure of this, which is epsilon closure of P, I know is P Q R. So, it can from P of course, it can go to P Q R. From Q on 0, which all states it can be, if it is already in Q, this machine M, now a 0 has come. You see, the, there is no transition defined on Q and therefore, Q on 0. So, this is the effect of the input symbol 0 will be in the state phi sub, 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 subset of states which is empty and similarly from R you can see on 0 it will go to there are no transitions. So, this is on 0 from R it can go to the empty state only. So, on 0 if the machine was in any one of these states, the machine M was in any one of these states, it can be in any one of these states P Q R by taking the union of these that is what I mean. So, you see therefore, on 0 if I am thinking in terms of a DFA which had this state which is a subset of this set of states of M on 0 it comes back to it the same state. And now, let us consider what happens from this state a 1 comes again. What is the meaning that uh, the machine machine M is in this state that means, it is in any one of these states P, Q or R and now a 1 has come. Right. Now, from P on 1 which all states the machine can be. Do I need to consider the that is first it will take some epsilon and then to q and then to then what is the effect I do not do not need to. See the way I said that if I am using this idea clearly then I just see I am in p a 1 has come can I go to any state actually from P on 1, let us say I do not go anywhere, 
So, this is m t, but from q on 1 I can come to q and from r on 1, from r on 1 nothing is defined. So, it is empty state, but now I need to take the closure of q and closure of q is q r. So, on 1 it will go to state It is the same idea that we had used for NFA, but only thing we are doing is we are taking care of the a possible epsilon transitions. And in doing all this, if you notice what we are doing that the machine is already here. That means, having considered possible epsilons before, now it is in here and now it is about a particular symbol. So, now 0 1 and now let us say a 2 come. Uh, 2 comes here, which all states the machine can be. So, you can see the same ideas phi p on 2 it will there is no transition defined, q on 2 no transition defined, but r on 2 it can be here back r, but now I need to take the closure of this closure of r is of course, r itself. So, I am in q and r and let me expand these states. We are supposing we are in this machine capital M machine is in one of these states q r and now a 0 comes. You see from q on 0 cannot go anywhere, no transition is defined from r on 0 no transition is defined, take the epsilon closure of this. So, it epsilon closure also will give me only the empty state set of states empty set and so therefore, from here on 0 I go to a state which basically corresponds to the empty subset of the set of states of m. What about 1? If a 1 comes in, let us do this from q on 1, I can remain here, I can go to q, r on 1, there is no transition defined. So, this is empty, and now I will take the epsilon closure of this, which is q r, epsilon closure of q is q r. So, if a 1 comes here, we are back to this state and uh, if it if a z if a 2 comes so let's do that we are in any one of these states and now 2 came from q on 2 we have no transition defined so this is q on 2 we go to empty state set r on 2 we come to r and now take the closure, which of course means we are in this. Okay. So, this state is completely defined for all the symbols, the, its transitions, this state also, and now this state, but that is easy to see. R on 0, what will happen? So, if this is r, the machine is in r, now a 0 comes, no transition is defined, which means we come here, r on 1, again the same situation. So, we will come here 0 as well as on 1, from this state go to this one. However, on 2, we remain here and then take the closure, which is r itself. And if one is in this state, the machine is in empty state, then whatever be the transition uh, symbol, 
input symbol one remains there. Right. So, what should be the final states as before in case of NFA construction uh, uh, NFA to DFA construction all those subsets in which has at least one final state. Now, you see all these three states P, Q and R were final states. So, therefore, wherever P, Q or R any one of these occur. So, which is this as well as this as well as this all these three states are final and of course, there is this is not a final state and I claim now this by the way this is a DFA clearly because for from every state there is exactly on every symbol 0, 1 or 2 there is exactly one transition and it is the construction was similar from NFA to DFA only thing here we took care of epsilon transitions by taking care of epsilon closure and now let us just understand step back and understand whether this machine indeed accepts this language. You see, you start from this. Now, this is a DFA, we start here, and now any number of zeros are there, 0 or more number of zeros, 1 is here. And if that j and k are 0, of course, there is nothing else, then it is in this state, and that is an accepting state, and therefore, that string will be accepted. On the other hand, let us say the string was some ones no zeros, some ones and twos. So, the machine will start here, some ones came, so it will here and then on ones you will be here and then some twos came it is here and it will be here and then finally, on some ones followed by some twos on such strings the machine will be in this state which is an accepting state and that is all right. But on the other hand let us take uh, 2 1 this just the string 2 1 and clearly the string according to this definition should not be in the accepted by this NFA that we kind of once are good and what about this DFA what I am claiming to be the equivalent DFA. So, initially you are here now a 2 came 1 is here and now a 1 came on 1 you go here which is of course, not an accepting state. So, therefore, the string to 1 will not be accepted and this machine m dash which is a DFA I claim using our understanding so far that we have built that this machine m dash and this epsilon machine. Uh, the, the NFA with epsilon transitions, they both these machines accept the same language. I have tried to show through an example though, that every NFA with epsilon transition, there is a DFA which accepts the same language and the construction that we had seen similar to NFA to DFA construction only we took care of epsilon transitions and the, the heart of the matter in a way is the epsilon closure notion and the details that the proof the, the, the formal proof of this idea that the construction is correct can be seen in any textbook on theory of computation. But what I would like to do now is to quickly show you uh, why such machines can be of use? Because the reason for that is the reason for asking this question is that we know that any NFA with epsilon transitions there is a corresponding DFA to accept the same language as that of that machine. So, what is good with such NFAs with epsilon transitions? And you see the reason is same as the case with NFAs. What we saw with NFAs was that yes, NFAs do not accept 
any language which is not regular that is which cannot be accepted by DFA. And yet NFA is an interesting concept, because certain languages it was for certain languages it was very easy or much easier to construct an NFA to accept than DFAs. Similar is the case with NFAs with epsilon transitions. So, let, let, me, let me give you one or two examples. Supposing I would like to show that L 1 and L 2 are regular, then so is that is L 1 union L 2. What I mean is L 1 and L 2 are regular, then L 1 union L 2 is also regular. Uh, we actually prove this using a few lectures back actually we gave a proof for this. I consider two DFAs m 1 m 2 accepting L 1 and L 2 respectively. Then another DFA we constructed, which as its state space had the Cartesian product of the two state spaces m 1 and m 2 state spaces. But you see using now this notion of epsilon transition, it becomes so simple this proof. So, we will have this. So, I have these two NFAs DFAs. So, this is m 1 and I had another machine for L 2 and any some number of final states and consider this new machine. So, this is m 2. Now, just consider another machine which is obtained like this that I add a new state and from this state I have epsilon transitions to the two initial states of the two machines m 1 and m 2. Now, it is quite easy to see that this machine m is now one machine right. This machine m will accept Right? Because supposing a string is in L m 1 union L m 2, supposing in particular it is in this uh, L 1. So, it will be accepted by this machine. On that string, the machine chooses to take this epsilon, non deterministically chooses it from this to come to this state and then you know it is like a DFA here. So, it goes to one of the accepting states. So, for the combined machine all these are accepting states the accepting states of m 1 union the accepting states of m 2. Right. Now, let us take another example which is this uh, a little more involved than this particular example. For that I need to take use the notion of reversal of a string and that idea is very simple. So, reversal of a string if you give me a string x then on I use x r to denote the reverse of x. So, what do I mean by this? So, supposing x was 0 1 1 supposing this is x, x reverse is of course, you write the string the other way around. So, 1 1 0. So, using this idea of course, you can talk of reversal of a language. So, what is L is a language. So, L is a subset of sigma star. What is L r? Which I this is the reversal 
of L. It's the set of all strings x such that x in sigma star x r is in L. And the idea of the use of epsilon is from this result that if L is regular, then so is L r. So, let me give you the construction and then one can argue why it is so. So, L is regular. So, let d f a m accept L. So, in picture I have this d f a and it has a number of accepting states. This is m and essentially L m of L and supposing there is on symbol a it goes here, on symbol b it comes here. right? Now, consider another machine which is like this, we take the same machine what we do is from the old accepting states of this machine, I do not mark them as accepting now, but I have a new initial state and have epsilon transitions to these. And this was the situation supposing this is p this is q this is r p q r what we do is in this machine now we reverse all the arrows so there was an arrow which means there was a transition from p on a it could go to it the dfa went to q now i reverse the arrow And this had the initial state here, that is the one which I make final states. This construction is very simple. I am going from machine M, I am going first of all, I reverse all the arrows in the transition diagram and mark the old initial state as the only final state. And then I add a new state, have epsilon transitions to the old final states. And now I claim that this machine M dash language accepted by M dash is L R. Let us very First of all, let us understand why this is an NFA. Of course, two reasons. One is that there are epsilon transitions. So, non deterministically from the initial state, this machine can either go here or here, uh, but non determinism also comes because we have reversed arrows. Consider for example, that two it is possible in a DFA that on A you came here as well as on A you came here. When you reverse the arrows as we did here, the direction of the arrows, so this is now going this way and this is going this way. You see that on reversal of the arrow directions, from this state on A, one could either go here or could 
go there. There are two transitions you find. And similarly, we will be able to make an example, where from a state on a symbol, nothing, no transition is defined because of the reversal of the arrows. And very quickly, why if x is in the language, why x r will be accepted? And the reason is this, because x is accepted, there was a path in the DFA from the initial to one of the final states. Right? And what is x r? It's just the string in the reverse manner. So, now the last symbol will be the first symbol. So, whatever the final state x had gone to, this machine, this new machine will come to that state on epsilon transition. It can, I mean it can choose to do so and then it will follow the arrows in the reverse manner to come here and this is the accepting state. So, in other words once more that suppose there was a string x which took the machine from the initial state of m to one of the final states. Let me, let me, let me draw it here. See, x had taken to this final state, this is in m, right. So, let us think of a, b, b, a, a, some string like this. And now, this, what happens here? The reverse machine m dash. There is a path from this state to this state on the same symbols, but going the other way a a b b a, because a took you from here some state here to here, right. Suppose, supposing this was the last state and there was the transition here, but now the arrows are reversed. So, this last state can take the machine from here to here and here to here. It is easy to see that this particular path, there is a path in this machine from this state to this one. But how did the machine go here? Non-deterministically from the initial state. So, it is not difficult to see that the way we have defined this new machine will accept precisely all those strings whose reversal is a string in the language.